Welcome back. Today we're going to create a MemSQL cluster on Kubernetes running on Docker Desktop. This will be great for helping us explore the system and understand the capabilities of MemSQL. We could do this experiment using a Docker Compose file or a Linux machine. In production, we're going to want a lot more hardware, but with this experiment, we can do it with the hardware that we already have. So we're going to start up by going to memsql.com slash download and signing up for MemSQL. That'll give us a free license. We'll go to the portal to grab that license, install Docker Desktop, enable Kubernetes mode and add additional capacity to the cluster. We'll create a Kubernetes YAML file, start the MemSQL cluster, log into MemSQL Studio, and start creating some content in our cluster. Finally, we'll clean up the cluster, deleting the Kubernetes resources and freeing up Docker resources. So let's dig in. First step is to go to memsql.com slash download. Down at the bottom of this page, we have a form that allows us to sign up for memsql. We can fill in our name, our email address, and once we push continue, it'll send us an email. We'll click on the link to verify our email, and then we can log into the portal. Portal.memsql.com allows us to log in and start to look at the details that we've got. Clusters is a great way to spin up a memsql Helios cluster, a managed cloud database. But licenses is where we'll go. Here's our license key that we'll use later. Next up, we need to install Docker Desktop. So I go to hub.docker.com. I'm going to search for Docker Desktop. I'll choose Docker CE, and then choose the edition of Docker Desktop appropriate for my machine. I'm on Windows, so I'll grab Docker Desktop for Windows. As I install it, I can accept the defaults. I'll need to ensure that I'm running in Linux containers. So after Docker starts up, I can click on here, and I can see that I it says switch to Windows containers meaning that I'm currently running in Linux containers. If it says switch to Linux containers, then definitely choose this to switch into Linux containers and ensure that you're running Linux so that we can start the Linux memsql container. We're going to choose settings and start to dial into more of the details of Docker. Here in resources, I moved the slider from two CPUs up to four CPUs, and I grabbed memory and moved that up to eight gigs. Now in your machine, you may not have the ability to move it up that much, but memsql can definitely benefit from more resources, so give it as much as you can. I'm going to choose Kubernetes mode and choose to enable Kubernetes. Once I click apply and restart, it'll start to download all of the Kubernetes control plane containers. That may take some time, so it may take a while until it says Kubernetes is running. Now that I've got both Docker and Kubernetes running with the capacity that I need, let's dig in and start to build some of the memsql content. So here's the companion blog post to this video. Here's the video that we're watching right now. <laughs> and here's what we're about to build. On our laptop, in Kubernetes, we have a deployment that will create a single pod. Inside that pod is the memsql cluster in a box container, and there are two processes running in that container, the memsql database and memsql studio, the web-based editor. We create a Kubernetes service that exposes both of those, and because Kubernetes services of type node port require the ports to be in the range of 30,000 to 32,000, then we'll expose port 30306 for the database and port 30080 for MemSQL Studio. Scrolling down a little bit farther, we will go grab all of the YAML content that we need for Kubernetes. Here's that YAML content. So I've got a blank folder here. I'm going to create a new file. Kubernetes memsql.yaml, and we'll paste in this content. Let's take a look at what we've got. So we have here one deployment. It will create one replica, one pod. And here's the template definition of how that pod is built. It uses the memsql cluster in a box image provided by memsql, and it exposes both ports, both port 3306 for the database and port 8080 for memsql studio. Here in the environment variables, we have two environment variables. Start after init will ensure that the database keeps running after the cluster is initialized. And here is the license key where we'll paste the license key from the portal. In production, we definitely don't want to put it here, but rather reference a Kubernetes secret. Three dots starts a new Kubernetes item. And so here's that service that we'll use. The service is of type node port and it proxies the two ports. So 33036 will go to port 3306, and 30080 will go to port 8080 in the container. 
So now let's go fill in our license key. Back to the customer portal, we'll copy this license key and we'll paste it into place. Again, in production, we want to put this in a Kubernetes secret so that it isn't accidentally exposed to source control or put in another place that we don't want. Now let's fire up the cluster. kubectl apply-f, and we'll give it our file name, Kubernetes memsql yaml. And we've created both things. It may take a little bit for these uh, resources to get created correctly. So we'll say kubectl get all, and it'll show us all of the things. We see that our pod is running and that our service is running, so we're able to get at this service straight away. Local host 30080 will get us to the memsql studio cluster. We could reach into another cluster, but let's reach into the local cluster. Cluster in a box configures the username as root and no password. Let's log in. So here's our cluster. Choosing the SQL editor, we can create some SQL. So farther in, down in this post, we'll grab the gist that includes all of the um, SQL that we can run. Here's that content. I'm going to start off by creating a database. Here's the execute button up here. I'll use that database and then create a table. I'm going to insert some data into that table and we can select that data back out. Now that we've got a memsql cluster running we could hook up our BI dashboard. We could collect our application details and hook that up using the MySQL compatible protocol, or we could run other content here in the cluster. This experiment worked great. Now let's go through the process of cleaning up. First up, let's delete all of the Kubernetes content. kubectl delete dash F, our Kubernetes memsql.yaml. Now we've deleted that content, which will also delete all the content in our database. Docker system prune will delete any uh, stopped containers, any networks that are not used, any dangling images. And so that will free up a little bit of hard disk space. In this case, it didn't free up any at all. We could also say docker image rm memsql slash cluster in a box to delete the memsql image as well. But in this case, I'm going to leave that on my drive because I'm going to do some more experiments. So we were able to quickly spin up Kubernetes. We are able to get memsql running in it. And we are able to grab our free license from the portal to empower it. You can start today with uh, memsql for free, up to four nodes. Go to memsql.com slash download to begin.